Hey everyone, this is Jack G, and these are my hobbies. Hope everybody's doing well. This is Father's Day 2021, and this is uh, kind of a bittersweet day for me um, in terms of, you know, thinking about my dad. I lost my dad. I hope all your dads are doing well out there. Uh, this is going to be kind of a two-part video. One is going to be a gift that I'm giving to my stepfather, um, and the second part is going to be talking about my final YouTube video and my final set of knives here that I have collected uh, over the years, and that I feel comfortable with kind of ending on this note, to be honest. And I really want to thank everybody's support for, you know, giving me comments, watching my videos, following, my, following me on YouTube and on Instagram, and for all the support of the community. Uh, I'll leave a bunch of stuff in the comments as well. So the first part of this video is going to be uh, a knife that I put together a while ago, but I wanted to give it to my stepfather, who's been a great man. Uh, he took on us kids when my dad uh, passed away when I was 18 years old, and he, you know, kind of adopted four kids and has taken care of my mother uh, ever since, and he's a great man. And so I have been thinking about a knife to give to him, and I think today's the perfect day to send him a knife. And I wanted to show that with you, Dave. If you want to, uh, you can skip forward to when I review these final knives if you uh, aren't interested in this part, but you know, maybe you'd find something interesting. So Dave, this is for you. Uh, I think you're a great man and you've been a great uh, father to us, stepfather to us. So I started, I wanted to just show you this knife first that I'm gonna give you. This is kind of it in the, the blue jeans here. So you can see it's kind of low profile, sits in the pocket, so it's not going to be too uh, invasive or anything, so you can carry it around the farm. I'd like you to use this, abuse this, and um, uh, you can open bags of chips with it if you want. You can, um, you know, cut rubber pipes or whatever you want to do with it. Uh, just use it, enjoy it. I hope you like it. Uh, I think this is going to be a little bit different than your typical knife that you're used to. Uh, this is not your... Uh, uh, father's knife or my father's knife. I started collecting knives when I was about eight years old with my dad. He was a traveling salesman and he bought uh, buck knives and Gerber knives for me. They're pocket knives and fixed blade knives. And so I've always had a knife back in the day when you could actually carry one to school and such growing up in the Midwest. And when my dad uh, passed away when I was 18, I kind of got a little bit lost in my life, I'll say. And I stopped collecting knives for many decades. And then I started collecting again and I'm gonna talk about that a little bit while I kind of review these final knives here. But this uh, is for uh, a great man. It's a stepfather uh, to my brother and my two sisters and uh, of course my mom. And so Dave, I put this together uh, a while ago, but I think this is perfect for you because um, while it's a little bit more of a modern knife, I think it's very durable, very sturdy, has a lot of features that I think you'll like. And so this is a Benchmade, it's called a Mini Freak. and. Uh, the handles were originally this kind of gravery plastic handles, and I replaced those with these uh, AWT Advanced Weapon Technology uh, DLC black coated aluminum scale. So they'd be really good for, um, you know, on the humidity and the wet uh, out there when you're on the farm and um, sweat, etc. So I think they'll hold up very well and, and they, they won't rust, obviously. So uh, this is a bench made, it has a very deep pocket clip, so you can carry this around all day. Uh, it's very comfortable. It is a three inch knife blade, so it's very uh, safe and legal everywhere you go. It is a uh, S30V steel blade. It is very thin behind the edge, so it's very razor sharp. It has never, I've never uh, cut anything with this, so it's perfectly factory sh sharpened. You can see the Benchmade logo here. It has a good thick stock, so I think that's good. You know, it's very durable, very sturdy. Uh, for you. <clears throat> I think this will fit your hands really well. It's kind of a meaty, a uh, little bit thick knife, so you're going to get a good grip on this. It has some good jimping here, so you're not going to slide if your hands are wet or, you know, um, you're sweating or something like that. And you can see it kind of ramps up here, so you can get a good purchase on it. And your thumb is here, so you're not going to slide forward. So I think I think it's a good knife uh, for carrying around every day. It was on the farm. The one thing I wanted to show you before I move on to these knives here real quick is uh, kind of the opening and closing of this knife. It is a lot different than, than some of the other knives that uh, you probably uh, held in your hand before or, you know, typical lock back here where you lock and unlock and it takes two hands. This is a one-handed operation. Uh, you can use two hands. You can use this left-handed. You can use it with gloves. That's why I thought it would be a good fit for you. Uh, so I hope you like it. 
and I'm going to show you how to open and close it. I'll be there in a couple weeks, so if you don't feel comfortable with it, you know, but if you do, you know, start playing around with it. If not, I'll, I'll kind of walk you through it when I get there. So basically, um, I kind of show you this, like how it kind of opens and closes. Okay, so this is the, so it is held in here with spring tension, so it's not going to come open in your pocket or anything, right? When it gets to about right here, it's kind of a little bit more free moving, right? And you notice that this kind of moves back and forth here and that releases the lock. So this is the lock and the lock release. So uh, if I open it, I can open it by kind of pushing down on here and pushing out and around, right? And just kind of put it in the palm of your hands, right? Kind of open and push it that way. And you can open it that way. And of course it locks in and you can see when it locks in, this kind of locks forward and there's the lock bar right there. So it's very sturdy. Uh, but when you pull this back, this is what unlocks it. So if I pull this back and just kind of flip my wrist down a little bit or kind of flick it down a little bit to give it a little momentum, you can see it releases the, the lock and then it kind of snaps in there. So you can open it, say with gloves if you want, just kind of by pushing down here, right? And then to open it or to close it rather, right? Okay. And your hands, your fingers aren't in the path of the blade when it closes. The other thing you can do is that you can pull down on this and kind of swing it open. It's kind of hard in front of this camera here, but what I'll do is I'll just use, let gravity help me. So I'm going to pull this back and just kind of give it a little, so you can see how it kind of comes out there, right? Up back and forth. So I can, I can literally pull this open, and kind of swing it. It's hard to do it in front of the camera here, right? And close it. I can pull it, pull it open like that. So you can use it with gloves as well. Um, the other thing that you can do is you can kind of flick it with your thumb here and once just kind of flick your just like that right kind of pushing against this thumb stud and it kind of flicks right open and then it locks into place okay so kind of pull that back to release the lock right or i can you know pull it back to unlock it and kind of flick my wrist out kind of like a switchblade action just by unlocking it right unlock pull it back there you go Okay, so this is the Benchmade Mini Freak. Dave, I hope you like it. Happy Father's Day. You're a great man, and you've gone through a lot in your life, and you deserve to be happy, and hopefully this will bring you some joy. All right, so I wanted to talk about these 10 knives. So this is where I'm going to kind of end my hobby and my knife collection for the most part. There's one knife, one grail that I really want um, that uh, I... Uh, haven't been able to get yet, but it's the uh, Koenig uh, Mini Air Arius. And uh, if you're a friend of Bill Koenig's, if you're a friend of Bill's, <laughs> no pun intended. Uh, if you're a friend of Bill Koenig's and you can help me get a Mini Arius that's DLC code, I appreciate it. But anyway, where I started with my knife collecting, um, I didn't collect for many, many years. And then I discovered um, Benchmade knives and I started collecting a lot of those knives. You've seen this, this is the Mini Sheep's Foot. Uh, Mini grip, I absolutely love this knife. It's such a beautiful knife. It's just the action on this thing is just so, I mean, look how drop shut that is. It's just crazy. Um, it's just so easy to open and close. I just love this knife. So uh, between the Benchmade and the Spyderco knives, and this one I, I love, I put these in my top 10 knives that I will uh, probably never get rid of. I say that, but I've sold 13 knives in the last two weeks to, to fund some of these uh, and traded some, try to stay at net zero in my hobby. But this is the uh, lightweight Spyderco PM3, which I really love, very slicey. I carry this all the time. So Spyderco and Benchmade kind of got me back into um, collecting knives again. This is the Spidey Chef. I'd highly recommend this. I know I'm at 11 now by showing you this, <laughs> but I love this knife. It's a great, great um, rust-free knife. You can see my videos on that. But I just want to kind of show you this one again because I do have a few other knives, including this quiet carry. It's a little bit less expensive than these other two quiet carriers that I'm going to show you here in a second. Um, but this is a great knife because it's uh, completely rust resistant as well, much like the Spyderco. So I have knives for different reasons, um, you know, for the rain, uh, you know, as a chef's knife kind of thing. And I've used this when I was in a pinch and didn't have my chef knives. So, you know, these knives that you'll see here are not just art, um, beautiful, but they're uh, also very functional and uh, they bring me joy and that's why I love this. So I'll kind of go over here. This is the Quiet Carry Waypoint you've seen before. It again is uh, all completely rust free and you can see my videos on that, but I just want to show you this is definitely in the top 10 of my knives and probably brings me a lot of joy in comparison to other knives. 
Uh, again, a quiet carry knife. I just love this knife. This finds its way into my pocket so often. I just love this, um, uh, the, the, the kind of milling here on this. Could give you a little bit of grip. Uh, not on this side so it doesn't catch on the pocket clip. Uh, just the blade, it's all um, impervious to, to rust as well. Uh, probably one of my favorite uh, knives. I waited until they came out with a thumb stud because I really think it makes a difference on this knife. It's so much easier to uh, deploy with a thumb stud if you ask me. Just boom, snaps right out. This, this is a top knife. Uh, a must have in my opinion. So, quiet carry, good job. I've got three of your knives, I'll never get rid of them. All right, so then let's go to the Hinderer XM18 3 inch. You've seen this before. You can see that I customized it, as you know. And that's kind of the fun with these knives. You can customize them with this uh, Toxic 2021 thing. Uh, I know you guys have seen this, so I'm not going to go through this very much. Uh, but just uh, the, the, this knife is just so well built, so sturdy, USA made. Go USA. So this will never leave. Uh, and I've anodized this, obviously, to a purple. Uh, this will never leave my top 10 collection. So there you go, that's the Hinder XM18 uh, three inch. Okay, then uh, you've seen this knife before, uh, but you probably haven't seen this new clip that I have. And I just love that, isn't that beautiful? Like the blues and the browns, it just ties it all in. Uh, sorry, the lighting's pretty crap. But I love that, it's also um, very straight, thin, flat. And the tension on this thing is, is great. I mean, it just really changes the Sabenza 31, uh, or you can do like a 21 or something like that. But obviously, Sabenza uh, must have in anybody's top 10 collection, I think, you know, once you figure out uh, how to get the Loctite on the pivot and stuff like that. Uh, but like, look at that clip. Isn't that just so cool? I just love that. Just changes the knife, changes the feel too. No hot spots. Super, super nice in hand. I just love this. Lands just perfectly, not a lock bar. Gorgeous knife, love this knife, never will get rid of this knife. Um, okay, so then let's go to the Mini Goblin. You guys have seen this, this is just insane. I mean, it's just so smooth, it's just it's just like butter. Just insane on these bearings, just ugh. And the deployment's just, listen to this sound. Listen to this, this is insane, ready? Listen to this lockup, okay? And look how small that flipper tab is. <laughs> and then boom. Perfect, perfect detent. Ah, look at that Warren Cliff blade, DLC coated. Just that shiny DLC. Anyway, you see my videos on all these things. I just wanted to show you like my top 10 and why they're the top 10. Just, just everything. Floating backspace or just everything about this is perfect. Love it. Okay. Now, these two, you've seen one of these in my recent video, I think. Except it's a little bit different, right? So this is the Spartan Harsey Folder 3.25 inch. You can get bigger uh, blades, but I, I like around the three inch blades, honestly, and they, they ride better in the pocket. But this is a little bit different, right? Like I've heat anodized these pivots, so it's they're tan instead of the uh, stainless steel that they were before. Um, the, you do have to heat anodize these. I just uh, did that on my, my, stove, my gas stove. Uh, so you don't need like a torch or anything like that uh, because this they, these are not titanium. Pretty much everything else on this uh, is titanium, including the clip, by the way. But you've seen this one in my other videos, so I'm not going to go over it too much. But what you did see before, though, was this with the Chad Nichols. And the lighting's terrible here. Sorry, I gave away my lighting because this is the, my last video I'm ever going to do. I really appreciate you guys for it. There you go. How's that? that just, oh, I love that. Kind of like a boomerang, Chad Nichols, Damascus. But this blade was on here, and I really liked it, but... I managed to get this grail knife. I, this is one of 15 uh, that they've made. Uh, look at that. It's the Guardian. This blue-green, I don't know if the anodization will come out here, the blue-green and the kind of bronze part of this, but isn't that, and it's, it's deeply lasered into there as well. It's not just like some surface stuff, but this is the Guardian. Look at that, just, just reminds me of the Knights Templar and Guardian Angel. Isn't that just so hot? Um, so I swapped the blade. I put the Damascus on because this didn't doesn't come with the Damascus. So I guess instead of just one of fifteen, this is one, an original now because I swapped this Damascus on onto this uh, blade, and it works great. Lockup is perfect. Um, 
it just, uh, in fact, I think they actually work better this way, and this one deploys so much better now with the S45BN. This is the new steel from, from Spartan Blades. Right here, listen to this. Just solid lockup. Ah, I love this. The jimping William Harsey design. Look at that drop point. God, isn't that gorgeous? And it just is like butter. Just like the Sabenza. A little bit different feel, but almost the exact same. Uh, but yeah, so let's take a look at this one because I don't think anybody's seen this one yet. Uh, this is one, one of my grail knives I always wanted. So do right and fear no man. That's always been my, my mantra, my motto. Uh, you know, be righteous, do right people. And I never fear any man. Look at that. Not gorgeous, and I, I heat anodized these pivots as well. This was not uh, this color, but I think didn't it? Don't you think it turned out well? Leave me comments if you think it did. I think just like look at that, <laughs> look at that. Chad Nichols. Oops, sorry, it's hard to do that from the camera. Chad Nichols Damascus on this Guardian Blade. Ah, right. It's got to be like one of my top knives here ever. Just in that anodization, they did such a good job. The blue. It's so hard to get such a good green. I kind of with this lighting, this, this is going to come out at all, but. Look at that, with the bronzing in here. God, that's just sick, isn't it? So I'm pretty happy with my final collection and um, kind of ending my YouTube and probably most of my knife collection. I don't think I'll do much more. Mini areas would be a good way to end it. I'll go to a few knife shows. Hopefully I'll see you guys at knife shows and such, but there you go. That's, that's a grail. And then, this is my only custom, I call this like a custom CNC knife maybe. You guys haven't seen this one, I haven't reviewed this. Let me get these out of the way because this kind of deserves its own attention. I should have just done another video of this, but you know, this is the end. Uh, just can't really afford to keep doing this hobby. You know, you don't really make money or anything like that off of YouTube, but it was a great experience and I learned a lot. And as they say, you know, you come from the knives and you stay for the friends. And I made so many good friends, but look at that, the Zerk. And, and look, I don't know if you can see, it's like this 3D effect to the way he did this. So he's an aerospace engineer. He grew up in Bellingham and he lived in, lives in Blaine, uh, Washington. Uh, and I live in Bellingham. And so he's a pretty cool guy, Craig. And as an aerospace, look at the, the, like the blues and the purples. The anodization on here it just changes the light in every, every look. I mean, in this, this, this is a V2 Cortex, sorry. Um, so Cortex, if I can even see it says Cortex here on this Zerk, um, pivot uh, on the uh, over travel stop here. Um, and this pocket clip's a little bit shorter on the V2, so that's one we can tell. It's a nice deep pocket carry clip. Um, I don't know if you can see this well in this light, but the, and it's just, oh, it's, it is literally, you know, they say this abenzas are, you know, to aerospace tech, um, specifications, you know, as far as the, um, how close and tight they are, but this is next level. And this guy is an aerospace engineer, so <laughs> so that makes sense. But I don't know if you can see this, like the, the blue, this pattern. First I thought it was just a diamond pattern on his uh, side. I was so lucky to get this one. Uh, they don't come up very often, but if you look at it like this, I don't know if you can you see that. Yeah, because you can see it kind of like, it's got kind of arches, um, which is just brilliant. So it's not just kind of like a flat diamond, you know, pattern he just puts so much thought into that i mean look at that how it just flows down here and then flows here and the zerk call and it's kind of like this uh, 3d look to it when you do hopefully it comes out on the camera it's just everywhere you look it's a little different and the purple inside in, in these um it's kind of like a raised diamond yeah or the blue rather sorry see what see what i mean when i move when i see that a little bit it's really hard it's subtle it's not just green and the lime green to get this color green and anodization is really hard it's very high high voltage but look at that look how clean that is there are no screws except for the this and the pivot right clean open backspacer can't touch the blade no, just, it's super smooth in here like all high-end knives should be like this um uh, as opposed to, uh, where's my, oh, here we go, the Spartan Harsey. You know, this has, it's a little, you can't touch the blade or anything, which is good on this. But these are, you know, these are a little, you know, a, a little, they're not sharp, but they're, they're, uh, they're not super smooth. So, you know, go the extra mile, you know, knock some of that stuff down, uh, is my opinion. But like everything on here is just smooth. 
And look at this little flipper tab. Okay, so most people will buy these and, and sell them pretty quickly on Facebook, for instance, because they don't like the flipper tab because they're used to a flipper like right here, right? Which is a natural kind of way to do it. Like uh, here on the, um, sorry, right? See the difference, right? And this, this is a really small one, which is nice. So you're just used to, you know, doing flipper tabs like that, right? And so this one, uh, you're like, well, is that like a front flipper? You could, you could do a thumb, you know, a front flipper like this. I'm not very good at it. In fact, I just got rid of my uh, drop Mira that I really liked. Um, in fact, I tra uh, traded it and got some, uh, I sold that one and traded some other ones so I could buy some of these knives. Uh, this is my only, you know, custom, if you will, custom CNC machined uh, type of knife. But anyway, uh, I didn't like the mirror because it was a, a you know, front flipper like this where you kind of have to, you know, do it like this, and I'm just not good at it. I just, I can't, just can't do it. And people, you know, and if you look, Craig, this is the way he opens his, this knife, right? He's like, he opens it like that, and uh, so look at that blade. Isn't that beautiful? It's kind of like somewhere between a sheep's foot and a tanto, just that upswip. You know, it's not like a worn clip per se, and I love this kind of style blade knife. In fact, my Malibu, which I sold to help fund these knives, uh, I sold, but, but I loved that that blade and the way it was. A uh, little stone wash, uh, blade here, uh, beautiful, beautiful steel. But, um, and then just the relief here is just such a joy. It's just, I don't even see this, but just, it's just subtle. Like these aren't, they're a little bit grippy, but not much. And it's, it's just, it's just so smooth. It's just literally, oh, I think it's, it rides on double bearings. But anyway, the way to open this, so people will sell this, sorry, I'm the, just trying to get this video uh, out the door. Um, so this is all improv ad hoc, sorry about that. So people will sell these right away because they didn't like it because they, didn't, they, didn't, they don't like to get up here and, and, and do this kind of you know flipper or the um, you know thumb flip. The way to open this, and every knife has a way that it likes to be open. So you just gotta get used to it. If you don't like it, you know, you know sell it, trade it. That's what I do. In fact, I just sold 13 knives in the last uh, week or two um, to fund you know some of these knives. The way to open this one though is, is on the side of your, uh, forefinger here. Okay. So you, you, you want to kind of go like this. Okay. You want to open it like this instead of, you know, this way, you want to open it from the side. And if you, if you figure that out, it's just like, boom, it's super easy, super smooth, nice jimping here. Um, so I'm going to leave some links since I'm not going to do videos anymore to some people that I really like, uh, that do some good videos. Epic snuggle bunny, best name ever. <clears throat> He's been around forever. Uh, he's done a few reviews on the different uh, brown knives. This is the brown knives uh, Cortex V2. Sorry if I didn't even get uh, get that out <laughs> earlier, but just the uh, the titanium and the uh, just the quality of construction of this thing is just unbelievable. And it's it's fairly light. And just everything he's done is just how balanced that is. Like everything is just like he's put thought into every single thing. A little bit of a fuller here. You can't. I don't know. Maybe once this breaks in, like I've done it once or twice. It's not really, um, some of the V2s had a little open fuller here and, and you could open it that way. I'm gonna try it and I'm gonna get off the camera because I don't wanna knock the, the video, but nah, I just can't do it. And some people can spidey flick it. I, I just can't get in there. But I, I love opening just like this off the side of my finger. It just seems so natural. And once people figure that out, they're like, oh, actually I love this knife. <laughs> but um, sometimes they'll just sell it at cost. You can actually pick one up secondhand at cost. Uh, because they can't figure out how to open it so so maybe don't tell anybody but anyway just the relief here is just like it's just it's just like butter ah uh, i mean this uh the action on this thing is insane it's so well balanced uh the only thing that compares is probably my my mini goblin these two are just you know so fidget friendly uh just all day long i could flick i could i could flick these knives all day long and they're just so smooth and buttery i mean it's just ah, uh, it's crazy crazy so love these i mean okay so you know probably your top three uh you know i love the sabenza throw that in there and you could probably live without the rest but anyway those are my top 10 uh, i really want to thank everybody for supporting the channel that's been great happy father's day to everybody happy father's day uh, David, happy Father's Day to you, Dad. Uh, rest in peace. Love you. And thanks. Thanks for all the support. Mahalo. Oops.